Tornadoes occur on every continent, except Antarctica, but more form over the central United States than anywhere else in a zone called Tornado Alley. That's because conditions in the alley are ideal for creating tornadoes. Warm humid air low to the ground moves north from the Gulf of Mexico and collides with cool dry air high above the ground rolling in from the Rocky Mountains. The collision of air masses creates a supercell, a massive thunderstorm that has a strong rotating updraft of air. Scientists aren't exactly sure what happens next, but the leading idea goes like this. The difference in speed between the faster high winds and the slower low winds causes the air in between to rotate around a horizontal axis. If one end of the rolling air gets caught in the updraft, it's bent upward and forms a funnel cloud. Its spin gets tighter and faster and the cloud gets longer. Rain or hail from the thunderstorm can then push down on the tail of the funnel cloud till it reaches the ground, forming a tornado. The thunderstorm begins when warm, humid air near the ground becomes unstable and rises, condensing into water drops to form a cloud. When the cloud grows and reaches the cold environment of the upper atmosphere, as much as 10 miles high, it flattens out, forming an anvil shape which spreads away from the base of the storm. Some of these storms become supercells with upward moving air and rotating winds inside them. This rotating air sometimes extends down to the ground as a tornado, picking up dust and making the funnel visible. While supercells can occur many places in the world, most occur in the central United States because of its unique geography and climate conditions during certain times of the year. When wet warm air moves up from the Gulf of Mexico and encounters the strong winds of the jet stream. These contrasting wind speeds and directions at different heights can cause a shift in the wind rotation of a thunderstorm from spinning along a horizontal axis to twisting along a vertical one. This vertical rotation of air within the cell is a mesocyclone, an indication that a regular thunderstorm has become a supercell. A supercell thunderstorm is a very complex animal. It has a very strong updraft, so winds can be moving upwards at 100 miles an hour. Supercells also have strong downdrafts, and one of them, called a rear flank downdraft, or RFD, is of particular interest to scientists. They believe that as the RFD wraps around the mesocyclone and descends, it helps intensify rotation at the surface, causing a tornado, a twisting column of air extending below the supercell. If you look at a radar image, you'll see this big hook coming out of the thunderstorm. And that hook is where the strongest rotation in the storm is. And that's where the tornadoes form if it's gonna make a tornado. The goal of Worman's research is to learn about these and other subtle differences in supercell thunderstorms that might help scientists forecast tornadoes more accurately and with fewer false alarms. There's still a lot we need to learn. That's why we're still going out every year in these ambitious studies to try to peel back these mysteries, to try to understand more about what's inside these supercells, what's causing them to make tornadoes when they do. With better forecasting and a better warning system, communities might be better prepared when the next tornado blows through town.
Tornadoes develop out of what's called a supercell thunderstorm, which is a normal thunderstorm with a persistent rotating updraft at its core. This rotating updraft grows into something called a vortex, a spinning column of air at the center of the storm. As a supercell grows in size, the vortex in the middle will begin to tilt, pulling warm air and moisture upward and pushing cold, dry air down toward the ground. The updraft of warm air causes the vortex to swell with water vapor, creating a spiraling funnel cloud. The cool downdraft begins to battle the funnel cloud's upward spiral, focusing the cloud into a smaller area and increasing its speed. With enough pressure and weight from the battling hot and cool air, the funnel cloud is forced down to the ground and a tornado is born. The ingredients for a tornado obviously are quite complex, but some of the basics are, you know, you have to have moisture, you have to have lift, and then the most, other most important ingredient is what they call wind shear. And then when a thunderstorm forms underneath it, it actually tips these, these horizontal rolls in the vertical position to where a thunderstorm forms over them, you have the whole thunderstorm rotating. Those final processes are what we're trying to study. You know, what's bringing the rotation finally all the way to the ground. And that's really one of the biggest mysteries of tornado formation. On the research front, we're working continually to better understand the actual physics, the science, of uh, how severe thunderstorms become tornadic, what conditions make that happen. Another part of the problem, of course, is to be alert and aware and tracking these things and able to monitor them and generate the forecasts and warnings. For that, we're working very closely with our partners at NASA. We've got an important new satellite asset called GOES-R. This satellite will sit about 22,000 miles above the Earth. You'll be able to take a picture of the entire face of the Earth at once, see the entire country in a single view. Where there's lightning, there's a strong chance for severe weather. The revolutionary geostationary lightning mapper, or GLM instrument on the new GOES-R satellite, will give forecasters powerful new data for when to recommend that people in a storm's path take shelter. Lightning is more than nature's fireworks display. Research has shown that lightning is an excellent early warning indicator for approaching severe storms. This data visualization shows actual lightning measurements captured by a remarkable array of ground-based lightning detectors capable of tracing how lightning propagates through the atmosphere. From space, the intersection of lightning and its corresponding cloud fronts becomes clear. That's why on the nation's new weather satellite called GOES-R, an advanced lightning detector system called GLM will begin surveying the entire nation for atmospheric flashes. According to project managers, this technology could provide critical minutes of valuable warning time in advance of approaching storms. The supercharged tornadoes are responsible for kickstarting the breathtaking auroras we see in our planet's polar regions. 
but the twisters themselves are so widely diffused they are invisible to the naked eye. It's long been known that the auroras are associated with the solar wind. The solar wind is the constant flow of charged particles coming from the sun and blowing toward the Earth. Scientists had a problem. It turns out that if you calculate the energy stored in the solar wind, you find that it's not large enough to generate the spectacular light show called the aurora borealis. There had to be another source of energy driving the auroras. That source of energy comes from the Earth's magnetic field. It deflects the solar wind, making the charged particles blow around the planet. On the Earth's dark side, energy from the solar wind gets stored up and then released in bursts by the planet's magnetic field lines. These lines cross on the dark side of the Earth, and when these lines cross, they rearrange themselves, releasing a burst of energy. And that's the energy of what are called substorms. The magnetic substorms create lots of turbulence, which generates the rotating motion any tornado needs. That rotation comes from circular whirling eddies, similar to the rings of swirling vapor that show up in the turbulent flow of a wind tunnel on Earth. And these eddies are the space tornadoes themselves. And about a minute later after these eddies form, that eddy, that twisting of the magnetic field line, funnels down into Earth's ionosphere, where it is ultimately responsible for the aurora. The space tornadoes generating Earth's auroras are huge. They form more than 62,000 miles above the planet's surface, taking on a classic funnel cloud shape. Wide at the top, but narrow at the bottom, where they touch the Earth's atmosphere. Space tornadoes out in Earth's magnetosphere are twice the size of the Earth, about 15,000 miles in diameter. But when they touch down on the Earth, they're actually quite narrow. So you've got this flowing, swirling set of particles that looks a lot like a tornado. But tornadoes in this near-Earth space and their even bigger cousins on the sun seem tiny compared to the twisters in the deep regions of the universe. Imagine the power of galaxy-sized tornadoes stretching across space for a million light years or more. The tornadoes of Earth become the oddballs of the universe when we discover there are far more tornadoes in space than on our own planet. To get a tornado in space, you need something to be set in motion analogous to the wind, and you need some mechanism that makes them go around and spiral around, forming that funnel shape we're familiar with, with tornadoes. Tornadoes on Earth are made of air, water, and wind. But virtually all tornadoes in space are different. They're made from the charged particles of plasma spinning in clouds shaped by magnetic fields. Turns out, they happen everywhere in the universe. Our tornado is an example of a vortex, and vortices are universal features anywhere you look in outer space. The planet's largest outbreak sent 358 twisters across 21 states in April 2011. But on the sun, there are more than 30 times that many, 11,000 at any given moment. And these tornadoes don't have to be made out of air. They can be made out of hot gases and magnetic fields. The sun has so many tornadoes 
because it's churning with activity that sets pockets of hot gas by the thousands into swirling motions. Computer simulations show the tangle of magnetic field lines inside the gas and how the swirling action makes the gas shoot upwards, spiraling into funnels to form the solar tornadoes. The gas in solar tornadoes is so hot, its atoms are broken up into their positive and negative parts. Known as charged particles, they make up a state of matter called plasma. When we're in grade school, we learn that the world is made out of three things, solid, liquids, and gases. Wrong. The sun is made out of plasma. Most of the universe, including gas clouds and stellar objects, are made out of plasmas. We're the freaks. We're the oddballs. We're made out of solid, liquids, and gases. Most of the universe is made out of plasma. Get used to it.